Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I need to thank uh, the Oral Health Talks to give this opportunity. Uh, I am Sunil Babu Kota. I am the Assistant Professor working in uh, College of Dentistry, Riyadh Elm University. I am here to present a topic on sealing on the carious tissue. Is it the new age pediatric dentistry? We'll go forward. So just to start as an introduction, I'm working here since a decade. Um, this is Riyadh Elm University, College of Dentistry, Riyadh Elm University. Uh, and this is the area of my work. Coming to directly going into the topic, if you can see this, uh, uh, we working on the pediatric patients and the patients with this attitude is always wonderful to work on these patients. But do you really experience how much percentage of the patients will be coming in this uh, range? We would be very happy if we get the patients like this. But unfortunately, most of the patients are these patients where it is very difficult for us to handle. So what to do uh, behind this, like to go ahead with this? And you can see the children who are very scared about the hand pieces, the anesthesia or so. How to handle these? So what can be done at this particular moment? The only option is like we need to think out of the box because there is no specific like uh, to reduce the anxiety. We need to work on these particular patients. So we need to always have a plan B. We cannot just leave the patient, uh, um, uh, okay, fine, the patient is not cooperative, we'll take the patient under general anesthesia. No, we cannot send the, every patient under general anesthesia and the patient is, and the child is very, very much suffering. So we need to think of an alternative where we can reduce the pain for this anxiety, uh, uh, anxious child. So first, most important to do this is we need to know the diagnosis of the patient, okay? Diagnosis of the condition, like uh, we need to talk to the patient. That is one of the area where we actually neglect. Talking to the patient and understanding what exactly is the problem. Because the patient tells that uh, I'm having pain while eating food. And you will just check the radiograph. And uh, since you know the radiograph is a two-dimensional picture, I'll come back in the uh, forthcoming slides. Like, for example, in this condition, patient tells that he, is, uh, he or she is having pain. And you plan for pulp therapy or extraction. So basically, here it is like you need to give anesthesia. And again, the anxiety of the child will be uh, increased. So you do a proper diagnosis and just restore with uh, uh, glass ionoma cement or any restoration followed by a stainless steel crown without even giving the anesthesia what more a child and a parent needs so the diagnosis is very important when you are dealing with the patient so the uh, can we trust these radiographs if you have seen the previous picture here can we really trust the radiographs because radiographs give a two dimensional uh, picture like uh, these are some of the examples like you can see in this picture how it looks like it's uh, uh, involving the pulp there is a furcation involvement and so and when you take a other another x-ray you can see everything totally different scenario so you are the the basically the the caries didn't even involve the pulp you see another example particularly in this uh, first primary molar see the condition, how is it, and see actually it is like the pulp is actually not involved here. Okay, so both the first and the second molars, you can see the, uh, the uh, mandibular. So it's very important to diagnose not only talking to the patient, talking to the patient and taking the proper history, the pain proper history, onset, duration, type of pain, aggravating and the relieving factors, and coincide it with the radiographic features. So don't go with your diagnosis, just the radiograph, okay? So then it's it's like based on this, we have various scenarios nowadays, like uh, G.V. Black used to say like, 
Complete carious removal is most important extension of the cavity to have a proper retention for the amalgam. And the things have changed now. It has come to a stage that partial carious removal and even to a stage of no carious removal. So factors impacting on the lesion management, these are the things you need to consider like primary or the permanent uh, teeth, like primary teeth over a shorter period of time. So your management, your you can compromise to a little extent, taking anxiety into uh, as a main uh, scenario rather than treating the caries completely, I mean, removing the caries completely. Then the lesion depth, the depth of the lesion plays a major role. And I will go in detail regarding this and the, the tooth surface, enamel and the dentine and the lesion cleansability. There are many factors impacting in the lesion management, but in this particular uh, presentation, we'll be concentrating only on the lesion depth. It's like, uh, if you see in this condition, it's an excellent pictures given by uh, Dr. Minachi uh, Kher and uh, Rao uh, uh, in this uh, textbook. You can see like the soft, firm and the hard dentine. If you can see here, the in this particular condition, they have not removed, like you have to remove the soft caries if needed. Okay. And see to that the uh, this particular area, like uh, if I can say like, uh, yeah, you can see in this particular area where at the cavo surface margin, it should be a hard dentine where the glass inomer, if you are uh, placing the glass inomer, it should have a proper marginal seal. So in this condition, it is, it is like even the depth of the cavity, the firm dentine, which is there is enough. According to the GV Black and the previous um, uh, concept where we need to completely remove the caries, which is not needed. The main thing here is the sealing the uh, uh, cavo surface margin. Even in the conditions like this, also, you can even leave the soft carious lesion also. But again, the most important is the this area should be cave of, uh, the hard dentine where the glass inomer or any restoration. I prefer glass inomer restoration to have a marginal seal and uh, packing and not allowing the soft caries to the oral environment. So I'll come back to this. So this is the new concept where like uh, it's not new to be frank, but it is not being followed. Still, we are going with the conventional technique of complete carious removal. So this is very simple procedure. Just remove the carious from the uh, uh, cavity and uh, apply glass inomer with the finger pressure technique and remove the excess. So how do you leave the carious? This is a very big question raised by most of the practitioners. And rather, who are not, I can say, like not updating the uh, subject or yes, I can, I can agree with certain, like you have certain things in your mind where you cannot accept the new trend which has come because leaving the caries is a big uh, mistake or so. So how can you justify this? Like uh, first, the past versus present, as you know, complete caries removal of bacteria versus incomplete removal. Complete removal uh, versus the sealing on the caries, complete removal of the caries, and the preparation versus preservation of the tooth and extension versus constriction. So these are all the changes which have been happening in the present uh, 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 trend in the in managing the dental caries. So this is the concept what I uh, what it is told. It is it is like like for example here. You the black circle where you can see here, it is nothing but you are covering up with glass inomer cement or even in the halls technique, as you know, covering with the stainless steel crown. The main reason here is the carrier surface and the microorganisms are not allowed to get exposed with carbohydrates and the microorganisms into the in the oral cavity. So what has happened, it will result, the microorganisms present there will die in starvation because there is no carbohydrates reaching the microorganisms. 
and there is no fermentation taking place. So this is the main idea is like sealing the microorganism. That's why I told in the previous picture also that the cavo surface margin, the glass enomer cement should be completely sealed to allow like to create a starvation area for the teeth, uh, for the uh, microorganisms inside. So there are many studies related to this particular area. I will go like, uh, uh, just show the uh, title and the conclusion of this. You can see here in 2011, it's published the partial caries removal in the primary teeth, where you can see that there is arrest of the dentinal caries lesions was observed after sealing, which is characterized by reduction of the bacterial counts and changes in the dentine color, consistency, and humidity, irrespectively of the baseline dentine characteristics. The clinical characteristics of the carious dentine change after a period of cavity sealing cannot be applied as absolute indicators to limit the excavation of the carious dentine when minimally invasive techniques are used. So you can see here the, the streptococcus mutants levels are reduced in this particular area. And you can see in 2013, the partial caries removal may have advantages, but limited evidence on the restoration survival. Yes, there is a limited uh, uh, evidence. So basically, it is like my only uh, here in this particular area in the partial caries removal, restoring the tooth with uh, press finger technique by using glass inomer cement recall the patient every three months every three months recall the patient and do the filling overfill again the tooth just not to allow the carbohydrates or uh, the i mean not allowing the microorganisms or the caries inside to expose to the oral environment so always call uh, every every six months uh, sorry every three months to Phil, the basic idea here is we are not giving any anesthesia or we are not giving any, uh, uh, we are not even using hand pieces here. So the anxiety of the child is reduced and the patient is motivated, the child is motivated, the parents are also happy to bring the patients to you. Only your idea is to not allow the caries deep inside to get exposed to the oral environment. So in 2016, also the stepwise and the partial caries removal probably has a high success rate up to three years after treatment of deep caries lesions. So, and you see the, but the partial caries removal is more likely to preserve the tooth vitality. So if you see in this condition, like, like for example, the patient age is eight years, seven years or so, if you can manage for three years, maintaining the pulp vitality without pain or so, the patient will be extremely happy where you are not even dealing with a painful procedures. Uh, in uh, 2000, the, the same study in conclusion, you can see stepwise and the partial caries removal have high success rates up to three years of treatment. So 2018, partial removal of the caries in the primary teeth, the st systematic review also gives the evidence to support the partial caries removal in the primary teeth as to longevity of the restorative treatment and clinical and radiographic success. The effect of different liners on the pulpal outcome after partial caries removal, the preliminary 12 months randomized control trial can see have a high success rate to treat the deep caries lesions even in the permanent teeth after 12 months of follow up. So this is one of the study where uh, we have actually done uh, as an in vitro study the penetration and adaptation of the high viscous zinc reinforced glass inomer cement where we actually contaminated the tooth surface with saliva, we contaminated the tooth surface with water, but we have restored the pit and fissures with the glass inomer cement in spite of the contamination and we had uh, studied under uh, scanning electron microscope and found that there is no significance rather. So in these conditions, even if the patient is uncooperative, so uncooperative, you can just restore the tooth even if there is no caries removal. Rather than leaving the caries to the oral environment, 
it is better to at least remove the uh, fill the restoration with glass inomer cement where based on this results we have done the clinical study on the patients where we have just restored the carious lesions without using handpiece without using any hand instrument and the patient is very uncooperative contaminated fissures, contaminated cavity with saliva, but still we restored with glass inomer cement. And we had an excellent results. Of course, the many studies have to be done in, in regards to this, but we have done like based on this, like an average age of the patient is 5.3 years with retention of 97% uh, and 94% after 12 months in the molar. Uh, molar teeth. So what more we want to see the concept has changed from it doesn't make a difference to like complete carious removal where you need to give anesthesia, rubber dam placement and uh, use of handpiece have come to a stage in the present days where not even removing any carious lesions can be equally successful and so. So uh, and, and I am not telling like this is the only way to treat this is an alternative method where if a patient comes to you with more uh, like uncooperative and very anxious patients, yes, there is, this is an alternative. It's not a crime to leave the caries inside the tooth. So this is an excellent textbook. If, if you get an opportunity, you can read it. If you can contact me, I can send you the book if possible. It's a wonderful textbook you can, uh, uh, you can read about. And uh, to conclude, the treatment for the pediatric patients is not just treating the problem. We also need to concentrate on the child's anxiety, where our target as dentists is that the child should be comfortable coming to us to get the treatment done. And I always end up with this saying, like uh, one hour uh, per day of study in your chosen field is all it takes. One hour per day study put you at the top of the field within three years. Within five years, you'll be a national authority and within seven years, you can be one of the best people in the world. Choose any topic. It's it's like, it's a small suggestion for uh, the undergrads who are listening to me. And, uh, and thank you so much. And thank you once again for the um, uh, oral health talks for giving this opportunity. Thank you.